Hey, everybody, welcome. I'm excited to each Wednesday night share just a short, encouraging uh, message or devotional with you guys, especially during this time where we're trying to uh, figure out how to more effectively communicate with you guys uh, and and just really uh, encourage you and empower you during this unique season that we find ourselves in uh, with the coronavirus. And so um, I just wanted to kind of kick off our, our time together by, by just sharing with you what I've kind of been going through and then just some of the verses that God's really been speaking to me through. And I just hope to be able to unpack that with you guys uh, today. Um, and, and first is, is this, you know, Monday morning, I woke up this week and I had um, just some really interesting thoughts that I personally have never had. And the thoughts that I was working through were these were these feelings of what 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 should I do today? I don't I don't really even feel like working. I don't um, I, I I don't think I can uh, do anything other than really uh, refresh my newsfeed. And I found myself in this state of, to be honest, uh, kind of this state of just anxiously thinking, what's next? Like, what do I do today? And I've never really had that thought. I've never really gone through emotions that made me feel that way. And as I started to process through uh, what was happening in my mind and going through all these what ifs, what ifs, I found that I was in this state of fear and I was reacting defensively to everything that was going on around me that I had no ability to control. And I think for a lot of us, maybe that's how you woke up Monday morning, or maybe it was earlier than that. Maybe it was a couple weeks ago. But for me, it really uh, hit Monday morning as my world started to change and, and what we were trying to do as a church started to change. And as, as, I, as I go back and I, and I think of some of those thoughts, I, I really narrow it down to this fear that I was working through and processing. And, and like I said, it was, a, it was a paralyzing fear. And so some verses came to my mind, and I just want to share some of these verses that God used to really encourage me Monday morning um, and, and really uh, allowed uh, myself to be kind of picked up off the, off the, off the floor and, and be able to move forward well. And the first uh, few verses that I want to read to you is uh, 1 John 4. And in 1 John 4, 16 through 19, um, in, in 1 John, he talks a lot about love. And uh, in particular, this chapter. And in verse 16, it says this. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And what really kept standing out to me in this was how his perfect love God's love, how it casts out fear. Fear has no business being there. And that also uh, reminded me uh, in 2 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy, as I, as I turn here, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses, well, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, uh, it says this. It says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And so as I started to work through and process when I was looking at 1 John 4 and then as I looked at 2 Timothy, uh, first and foremost, God is love. Okay, so God is love. Now, what that means is uh, he's the definition of what love is. And so he gets to define what it is, what it's not, and how it's played out. Not only in how he delivers it, uh, but how he's designed us to experience it and how he's designed it to overflow out of our lives. And if it's effective in us, it points people to God, not to us. That's the kind of love he's talking about. And, and so uh, this is a love that, that is different. And, and he assures me of his love. How? Well, one, he sent his son to come and die for me. Think of the confidence that should give you in, in the love he has for us. The other thing is at the moment of salvation, you are given the Holy Spirit. Right, so, so now you have God inside of you the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then third is the promises that are uh, that come through that, right? So now we we have confidence. We don't have to fear judgment anymore, as first uh, John was telling us. Like we don't have to fear that anymore. In fact, God's love casts out that fear. 
And, and, and so um, as a result, we, we, we don't have to fear what's in front of us, what's to come, because we know the end. We have confidence in knowing what Jesus has promised for us. And so when we look at this fear that I think so many of us have been working through and processing, and I know that I was going through, what I found is that that was actually imprisoning my mind. It had control. Right. And so and so my ability to 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 experience God's love, to manifest that love was like like that fear was was hindering me from doing that, not only from experiencing that, but but to actually move forward by faith from that love, because I was being paralyzed and crippled by fear, because that's what fear does. Fear takes hold of your mind. It takes hold of your heart. It brings these anxious thoughts and, and, and these, these unknowns, these what ifs, all of a sudden start to manifest themselves in your lives that when God's love is in control, you don't have those thoughts. You're amazed at who God is. You're amazed at what he's doing in you. You're amazed at the confidence that you can have regardless of the world. And so when I'm experiencing fear, I am allowing something that we just read is not of God. God has not brought into heart, our hearts and our lives. And, and, and so I'm choosing and allowing in that moment, I'm choosing and allowing fear to take precedence over who God is in my heart and in my life. And, and, and that, that, I think, is something that, that we've been working through because really when, when I see what's going on, I think for a lot of us uh, in, in the last few days, we've been asking questions like about our own health, right? Like, like there is fear in relation to what is going to happen to me if I get this? What's going to happen if I pass this? What's going to happen to this person, to that? And so there's this, this bodily fear that we have right now. There is um, a, a fear of like our money. What's going to happen with my money? What's going to happen with my retirement? What's going to happen with my job? All of these things, we are, are dealing with that fear. I think for, for some of us, it's just normalcy. Uh, we woke up Monday morning, and and for a lot of us, our kids were there because they're not allowed to go to school, and and our new uh, our new sense of normal uh, is totally different. It's changed. It's rocked us, and we don't know how we're going to move forward. And so, what that brings into all of us is this this fear. And once again, fear uh, for me when I was processing and working through it, I know one thing that is very clear. Fear represents a lack of trust. Fear represents a lack of trust in, in the truth that, God's, that God loves me and that his plan is perfect and that he holds the future. And that's why you see like fear and fear and love, they cannot coexist. You cannot, uh, like you, the fear that you have, you, there's no way you can look at scripture and go, oh, this is from God. No, 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 because when you read about the fear or the love that God brings into our life, that love kicks out fear. It removes it. They, they can't coexist together. And so when I'm receiving um, and experiencing the love that God has for me through the power of the Holy Spirit, there will not be fear. You see, Galatians chapter 5, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 uh, and, and, and 23, we see the fruit of the Spirit. And, and the fruit of the Spirit uh, is, is, is things that are evident, characteristics that come out of our life as a byproduct of the Holy Spirit. In other words, they're not just normal characteristics. Even words that, that we hear, they're, they're not the same thing because it's a byproduct of God. And it's, and it's got the power of God in it. And so, as a re and so in relation to me being in tune, walking in step, being surrendered to the power of the Holy Spirit and walking in that, in chapter 5, verse 22 of Galatians, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So these are things that will naturally come out of my life, out of my thought life, my outlook towards people, my outlook towards me, my situations. These are the things that will come out if I am surrendering myself to God and walking through the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the, by the, these are the byproducts of that. Fear is not on that list. It has no business being there. 
And so, and so how can we walk in that? How can we, well, how can we put to bed this fear? Well, by understanding and knowing that God's love destroyed Satan. It destroyed the plans of the enemy. Like, like because of Jesus Christ, the enemy's defeated already. And the closer I am to God, the closer I am, the more I am following the leading of the Holy Spirit in my life, the more confidence I have. The more trust I have, the more faith I have, uh, the the my ability to navigate through troubled waters when when things happen, whether it's a virus, whether it's a family situation, uh, whether whatever it may be, I have those things, the fruit of the spirit, in my life, and it's coming out of that, not because of my own ability, but because of God inside of me, because of God's love. And so, the closer we are to Him. The more that those things are going to happen, the more you're going to reciprocate that love. And, and so this is a time that we find ourselves in, like, like maybe for some of us, like, like no other time before, where we really have to guard our time with him. And so I just want to encourage and challenge you, just as I'm challenging myself, that I have to guard and protect my time with God right now. Because if I don't guard and protect my time with God, the news feed starts to dictate my mind and my heart versus the Bible, versus God's word, versus his love. And, and so um, we have to guard against that right now. Like I said, maybe more than ever. And so this is a time for us to do that. And my question for you is, how is God's love right now being activated in your life? How, how are you loving others in this season? And it's a unique time where we've got to wrestle through what does loving someone else look like? Because for some of us, loving someone else right now means distancing ourselves from them. But, but you know what? That also, that, that doesn't mean, like physical distance doesn't mean I, I can't love somebody. Right? I can love someone by picking up the phone, by showing them that I care, by asking how they are, by sending them a text message, by emailing them, by, by letter, whatever. I can love people. I can choose to be an extension of Jesus even through this difficult time. And so I have to ask, how am I doing that? How am I going to pray that God uses me during this time? Because, because this, he allowed this. This, this is happening. And so you have to believe and know that God wants to use you in this. Um, how am I going to make the choice that I am not going to take this posture of defense for however long this is? That I'm actually going to take the posture of offense. That I'm going to move forward. That I'm going to pursue what God has for me. That, that I am going to love people well. It may look different. I may have to be, get more creative at this, but I'm going to choose to play offense. And I'm going to ask God to use me in ways that he never has before because greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world, right? And, and so just maybe, even through this just difficult, uh, horrific situation that we all find ourselves in, just maybe even through this, he's going to use you to impact somebody that, that may be, as a result of this, is ready to hear a message they've never been ready to hear before. That's maybe going to be ready to experience the love of God, and maybe they haven't been open to that ever before. But now, for whatever reason, they are. It's interesting. Somebody in our that's, that's being discipled uh, through our discipleship program on Monday, during a pandemic, received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. During a pandemic. Our service Sunday that was live, that was broadcasted out, it reached more people than a normal Sunday gathering during a pandemic. Now, what does that tell you? I know what it tells me, that, that God can absolutely use and operate anything at any point in time. See, this virus, it did not surprise him. He wasn't surprised. It didn't throw it off. It didn't, it didn't change his story. It didn't change uh, his plan. And so we have to make a choice during this time to be faithful, to let the fruit of the Spirit pour out of our hearts and our minds, and to ask ourselves the questions of when these fears and these, these anxious thoughts, when they arise, what am I going to choose to focus on? And Philippians chapter 4, 4 through 8, it gives us some incredible wisdom into how to navigate through these times. It says this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then he says this, which is the ultimate grid that you should base your thoughts off of. He says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. Focus on these things. Ask yourself, are you going to worship? Is what you're responding to, is it, is it truth? Are you allowing thoughts that you have no business allowing into your mind? Are you allowing those things to control you? And, and lastly, in John 14, 27, it's in red. In other words, Jesus wrote this and said this. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. And for me, as I started to think and meditate on these verses, God changed my heart. He changed my mindset. And I was reminded of his love, his authority, his sovereignty. And guess what? I went to, I went to work Monday. I was inspired Monday. God gave me vision, creativity hope. There was a peace. There was an optimism. And I started to see the things that I just read about from scripture. Those things started to happen in my heart and in my life. And he started to open my mindset up to the reality that, hey, Steve, this is an opportunity for us to do something incredibly special, for us to reach people. This is that time that, that people look and, and they ask, is this faith, is this relationship with Jesus real? Is it authentic? Is it something worth putting my hope and my trust in? And I just want to encourage you um, during this time. You have the choice. What are you going to choose to focus on? How are you going to move forward? And guard against that fear. Listen, I'm not saying don't be prepared. Don't be wise. Don't listen uh, to what the experts are saying. I'm not saying that. We should be prepared in all those things. And, and, and that I'm saying guard your heart and your mind against fear. Because God's love, his perfect love, cast that away. Because he sent his one and only son to love you. So that you could experience salvation. So, so that you could have a hope and a peace. Because we know how it ends. And so you have all the confidence in the world right now, not because of what we know or don't know or how healthy or not healthy we are, but because of who God is. And so let that be an encouragement to you uh, the rest of this week and look forward to uh, preaching Sunday to all of you. God bless you. We'll see you next week.